All right, guys, so for a long time, I have been running my fridge of 12 volt in the back of the tray since we pretty much got the shark. Before everyone went all crazy with their different 12 volt options and extra batteries and everything, I've been running this probably since February or March this year when the shark came out. And this basically runs straight back to the 12 volt system that sits underneath the back seat. I've got a bunch of other 12 volt stuff that runs as well. If you look down the back down there, you see all those cables, they're all doing something, one thing or another. But now I'm going to actually fix this problem once and for all. And we're going to install a port 12 volt Anderson and Siggy adapter there. Um, and then we potentially might do a second one on there when I can be bothered with a bit more time. This way um, we can give a service and install option so you guys can basically get your 12 volt in the tub off your standard 12 voltage, 12 volt circuit in the shark. It's all managed by the shark. It all charges by the shark automatically. I have tested this non-stop. So I've been running fridges. I've been running Starlinks that I've got on the roof of the 12 volt system. I've been running lights. I've been running um, air compressors. So these, these sockets are also connected to the same circuit. I've been loading 200 amps on this um, total with air, two air compressors on two times 120 amp Andersons with a fridge and the Starlink, no problem. The high voltage system automatically charges the low voltage system. Everything just works. There isn't any issue. All the issues people are reporting that you're seeing on social media have something to do with an issue with the shark, which I have not been having a problem with. And I know other people that also have been doing this that have no problems with it. So this is a proven method. I'm gonna go ahead and install this in mine, even though we've done this for other sharks already. I figured we might as well have a better demo shark to show customers that you can have ports in here. You could have five, 10, 20, whatever, however many Anderson ports or Siggy ports or waterproof um, USB-C ports that you want in the back, as long as the carrying load from the low voltage circuit can manage the total combined load. So that's something that we can talk to you about and get you the right solution depending on what you want to run. So let's get into it. Leave you D bearing tool. So I need a drill. two mil drill bit, three mil drill bit. Not self-tapping or yes, self-tapping? No, but not. Okay, let me go find some bits yeah. and pieces. The uh, joys and fun of R&D. Yeah. This is the harness we finished making. To make sure it's all kosher. So this will sit in the side. I've got the, the Siggy socket, Anderson, 50 amp, 15 amp, down to a fuse block. Oh, look at how clean that table is. That's, that's, that's after hard day of work. Clean every morning. It's really not. <laughs> oh, let's get back into it. Fuse our work just to make sure. What kind of fuse is that? Uh, this is a midi fuse, but normally I wouldn't fuse it here. I've actually already got a fuse in there and needs to see where all the relays run in otherwise, but I want to put a second fuse here just in case something else goes wrong along the way for safety. So, fuse, connection, did it all by Anderson so it's modular. Did it top pre, pre make these. Who needs power tools in this day and age? Well, if you drill the right holes. Now, if I use a water spirit for this, the car's not straight, it doesn't really help, and I know my car's not flat. So, we're gonna play. Link, link to video of Beer O'Clock Hill here. <laughs> I don't want it on flat, just so we're clear. <laughs> mm. You've lost the screws, haven't you? I have, Captain. Checked over there, would you? What kind of accent was that? Mm. 
He straight up and paid earlier. Oh, you know they're magnetised? Yeah. All the uh, filings that we've been <laughs> gracefully cutting off today. Collecting all the... Oh! <laughs> Don't keep putting it in there! <laughs> Drop it! Which is stronger? Oh, that's just not right. Did you just screw it in? Hard to find good help today, these days, guys. Yeah, it is actually. You're looking for a job, you could help. And you and, and you're sure you can deal with this craziness every day? Well, yeah, you have to deal with this craziness. Can't feel that. Don't don't apply. All right. Happy, sir? No, I think so. All yeah. right, let's plug it in and see if it blows up. We blow up. Well, guys, this is what's um, underneath the back seat. I've taken the cover off just to have a look. So now that you got the mini fuse in, um, you chuck a, we'll chuck a washer and a bolt down that to secure that. We'll tighten that up in a second, but this is just to give you an idea. And then I'll run my positive loads off that. And you can definitely tell like, they've added provisions for at least this, so that's a good thing. All right, guys, so you can see it's all connected in. Uh, pretty good, it's getting wild here to grab the fridge. So you can test it, I mean, I've already tested it with a multimeter, but you know, what better way to actually plug the heat in and we have power at the front. There you go. There you go. DC 13.8 volts. That's it. And I even wired up some lights. I was just going to connect these lights directly to the 12 volt system because they have it on and off. But I actually switched it all the way to the front using another circuit I already had here. So um, in case, like in my mind, it's like if I'm traveling long distance and say this failed because this is all fused down the bottom, I did have an option then to go plug this in up here as a last resort. So like a, like a backup, basically. Like if I need power because I've got a fridge and it's not working, I still have other places where I can get 12 volt from. You can also plug your 12 volt fridge if you've got one that supports AC to also these ports here, which obviously down here, they turn off when the car is off. But what's good about that is when the car is on, the fridge will actually automatically change to AC because it prioritizes AC. You'll run off the AC ports when the shark's on and then when the shark turns off, it'll automatically fail over to the 12 volt system on its own. So you don't actually have to do anything. You'll just switch between. So your fridge is always running. Is it really, is it pointless? Um, I don't think so because the AC system's always running. And it's also good too, because if you have your fridge plugged into the AC, you actually get a signal on the dash that says AC operation's running. So if for some reason you saw in your dash the AC operation wasn't running, uh, it might be a clue to something's wrong down here. Like stuff might've moved around, cables might've come undone, so you can come check it. But I, I, I used to do that. Um, I'll probably go back to that now that I've got a proper setup in. And if you need more, you can just get a splitter like this. Obviously, make sure you maintain your loads. Don't, you know, know that it's a 50 amp load. Don't go plug two 50 amp loads into this to make 100 amps there, because that won't end well, blow the fuse and won't be friendly. But yeah, anyway. The shark should have come this way. It should come with ports like this. It's 12 I don't know why it didn't. It's really weird. BYD for listening. It should be a standard BYD thing, because this, this will never go flat. The, the high voltage system will always charge a 12 volt system. Even if the shark is turned off and locked, it'll still charge it. So the 12 volt system will always keep running. The only time it would stop is if the high voltage system got lower than a certain percentage, probably like 18%. But I've even found the shark will automatically turn the generator on, charge a car, high voltage system, which actually charges low voltage system. So never had a flat battery in this car, despite everyone else's operation. I don't understand how they're managing that. Complete drive-in, drive-out solutions for your Starlink Mini. All done right here in our Melbourne workshop. Check out our full range at allterrain.com.au.